Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Amy Rovner, and I am an instructional designer here at Shoreline Community College. And I just wanted to thank you for joining me this morning. Um, we are going to do um, an overview of Canvas and how to kind of top to bottom, start to finish, just so you know how to find Canvas, log into Canvas, um, how to navigate around. Um, and now you may see different things from different instructors. Um, and we'll cover how to submit a discussion assignment, how to submit a regular assignment, how to take a quiz, and how to look at your grades and see how you're doing and um, find feedback from your faculty member. So that's kind of our plan for the morning. Okay, so starting at the very beginning, um, we want to just, hopefully you can see my browser window here now. I have a just a blank Google search screen open. And um, a couple things to think about with Canvas um, and online learning in general. Um, make sure that um, you use Chrome or Firefox with Canvas. You can also use Safari um, with pretty good luck. Once in a while, things don't work quite right. Um, don't use it with Internet Explorer. And so if you have a, a Windows machine, a PC, um, often Edge or Internet Explorer is the default browser. And you really want to stay away from that with Canvas because they're just a little um, outdated and they don't work as well. Um, and so start with Chrome or Firefox for your best experience. Um, also, uh, I know we all have a variety of challenges going on right now in this um, COVID-19 situation. So if you don't have very stable internet, um, just know that things might be a little slow or a little quirky. Um, and also know that everything's a little slow right now because the whole world is online and trying to continue with education and work and business online. And so, you know, just giving you a little bit of patience and a little grace sometimes. So hopefully it won't be frustrating. Um, it's been behaving pretty well today. So here I am at a Google window. And I am, the first thing to do, obviously, is to be able to log into Canvas. So you're going to want to be in Chrome or Firefox. And to find, like, the fastest way to get into Canvas is just to go to, whoops, Shoreline's website. So it's Shoreline Community College. If you start typing, it'll probably come up. But our official address is shoreline.edu. So let's go there. Here's Shoreline Community College home. Um, I think most of you have probably found that because you found me, so that means you're already kind of in the system. But here we are at our homepage. Hopefully you have all seen um, this big red banner about how campus is re operating remotely. Um, you can click down from this detail button at the far right to read more. Um, it's telling you the current status. And then if you click the Stay Informed button, that's going to provide you with a lot more information on what's happening on campus, what's changed it, what has changed, excuse me. Um, here's a daily update from our president. Um, she seems to do that pretty much every evening. So you can always look here and read most current information. Um, for example, like this is news to me, um, starting Monday, I guess. I don't know, starting today. Um, they've closed the Parent Child Center. So that kind of stuff happens and updates frequently. So make sure you check that out. Um, but in order to find Canvas, um, and actually all information that's super helpful for current students is right up here hiding at the very top next to the Shoreline logo, there's a Students tab. And if you click this little blue Students button, this is the entry place and landing place for all the information you need as a current student. I'm not going to go through all this information right now, but just note there's information about your classes, registration, transcript, academic supports. Um, we're still going to be doing all of our tutoring centers, all our learning centers, just in a different format um, for spring quarter. There's calendars, there's services for students. Those also are operating as much as possible remotely. Um, I know we have online counseling available and some other services like that. And we're working really hard to have our full offering of services available for spring quarter um, via Zoom or online. So keep checking back, but all this is here. But today we really wanna talk about Canvas. So I'm gonna ask a question of all of you and um, really just if someone hasn't been able to log into Canvas yet or can't check their Shoreline email, if you can unmute your microphone or just write a note in chat, 
that would be really helpful to know um, if and especially if you're a returning student or a brand new student. Um, if you were a student in winter quarter, you should be able to get in just fine. Um, but if you're a returning student and you've been gone for a quarter or longer, sometimes we need to restart your account. So you'll need to go into this email tab here. If we click that to open and just go to activate my account. Click on that. And you need to know your student ID, which if you're a Shoreline student, if you started here, it's a 965 number. Um, it's mm, three, four, five, six, eight digits long. Um, and a PIN. And the PIN, default PIN is two digit birth month, two digit birth date, and two digit birth year. And so those six numbers make up your PIN unless you reset it. Once you hit continue, it will ask you to create a new password. Um, if you remember your old password and you liked it and it still meets our security requirements, go for it, re-enter it. You do not need to come up with a new one. Click submit. Um, you should get a confirmation screen and uh, a link to um, log right into your um, go.shoreline.edu email address, which is a Google account. Go ahead and test that link. Click on it, make sure you can log in that properly and it opens and then you know you've reset your password properly, you've kickstarted the system, and you can try to log in to Canvas right away, um, but it may take an hour or two because it's sort of a cyclical thing where they match up and recreate accounts. So keep trying, you know, if it doesn't work immediately, um, you know, it's give it two hours. If it hasn't kicked in, kickstarted, excuse me, within the two hours, go ahead and send a message to our e-learning offices. It's e-learning at shoreline.edu explain what you've done and um, we'll make arrangements to help work that through with you either live on a Zoom session or we'll call you or whatnot. So please reach out. I don't want you to be frustrated about that. But let's pretend all our accounts are set, ready to go. Again, we're going to that students tab at the top. We're gonna click there. And then we have a quick button here on the far, far right that says Canvas. So click on that. And that's gonna take you to a login screen. Um, and so for you, it'll probably look like, well, it won't have my name in there. So, oops, there we go. It'll just look like this. You'll see our shoreline, you know, banner entry gate thing in the background. You know you're at the right place. So you just sign in. And so I'm gonna sign in. Whoops, I could type this morning. That would be helpful. There we go. And you're gonna use your whole first name, dot last name, or whatever your email account looks like at go.shoreline.edu. I have a faculty staff one, and so we don't have the go in our email address, but make sure you put that, the go, and then the period, enter your password, and sign in. And so it's gonna, you know, this working in the top left, if anything's slow, just always look in the upper left. If it's spinning, it's, it's working, it'll be there soon. Okay, so that's how you log in. Now I'm actually now gonna switch over to a student account that I have prepared here. Here we are as a student. Um, I wanna show you, this is the landing page in Canvas. So this is where you, um, you log in and this is where Canvas puts you. And I'm gonna do a quick tour of some of the highlights of this page. And then we're gonna go ahead and go into a class and look at the actual class. So the landing page is helpful because um, it's also called the dashboard view. I should say the proper name up here on the left, dashboard. That's where we are right now. Um, at the top here, these are called global announcements. And we use these fairly rarely, um, but because we're in um, extraordinary circumstances at the moment, um, there's two messages up there, but often we keep them really short and we don't, we try really to keep them to urgent messaging. But for now, you know, it's important that you as students know campus is operating remotely. The, the blue items are links that you can go to, um, learn more about COVID-19, connect with us as a campus. And then of course, if you haven't registered for the quarter yet, here's a bunch of links to help you get registered. Um, the second one is about the student sessions, where you are today. So clearly you've probably already seen this or heard about those from others. Um, this set of sessions today is the last one. Um, but that doesn't mean we're done Offer for more sessions. Um, but this is just closing out this week's of sessions. Um, oh, and the last thing is if, you're, if you've read a global announcement and you're good with the information and you don't need it again, you're welcome to click this little X in the upper right. That will close that announcement. 
but it also means you'll never be able to get it back. So please don't close it unless you're really done with the information. Um, on the left hand side here, this is called your global navigation menu in Canvas. So this is, you know, how you get around your full Canvas account. So the top one is your account kind of profile settings, that kind of thing. Um, so we're going to click on that for now. Um, you'll get a little sub menu here or a long sub menu here. Right now I'm logged in as Sam, Sam who's a Canvas student. Um, I'm not going to go over most of these, but I do want to show you if you click on the profile link here, the second one down, you're going to come to a profile page. You don't have to add a biography or links or anything like that, but what is important here is if you see if I hover over the image, I get a little pencil. This is where you're going to go and it says click. My, my pointer is so big it's hard to see, but it says click to change profile pic. So um, Canvas by default, you have just a little gray head. A lot of faculty members will ask that you put a picture into your class. And it's kind of just a nice thing to do because it um, lets you, I don't know, share a little bit about yourself. Um, if you're in a class with 30 other or 29 other online learners, it just helps you kind of remember, oh, right, Sam's the one with a panda face. Um, and as you start building a little bit of community in that classroom, it just helps as a glance, if you're a visual person particularly, to just help identify who is who. Um, so you can upload a picture directly um, from, you know, a file in your computer and you just click upload. And oh, here, there we go. Choose a picture and then you can surf your files that are on that device. Um, or you can bring over an avatar from Gravatar, which um, I'm too old to know what that is, but um, I know you can make an avatar there and use that instead. Um, just pay attention. Um, some faculty require that you use like, an actual image of your face. I think that's a little less frequent. Um, mostly it's just some sort of image that you like that then can be identified with you. Um, do know that this picture is seen throughout Canvas. So if one teacher wants your face and another one doesn't mind, you can only put one up and that is the one that will be throughout Canvas. So just pay attention to their requests and by all means reach out if you're not comfortable about putting an actual face picture up there um, and I'm sure they'll work with you. All right, so we're going to skip all the rest of this for now um, and go to the next item on the list here on the left hand side. This is a dashboard view. You were here already, we'll come back to it in a minute. This courses button is actually a full list of your courses in Canvas. Um, this long, your list won't be this long, I apologize, but Sam belongs to a lot of classes um, and his list or their list is really long. These are all the ones that are available in these colored boxes on the dashboard view, but Sam's enrolled in even more classes. And so if you scroll all the way down the course list, there's an all courses button. And at that All Courses button, you're going to see every single class you've ever been enrolled in. Current enrollments are the top, past enrollments, and future enrollments. And so um, let's say that Sam doesn't want this test course here anymore. You can just unclick these orange stars. And the course will live in the All Courses list, but it will no longer be on Sam's dashboard view, that view with the colored tiles. So often people just want um their current classes on that dashboard view because it just gets a little overwhelming so i'm just going to unclick a bunch of these um and, oh we do want that one that's the class we're in okay all right let me just unclick some of these and it'll simplify sam's life quite a bit this is the whole long list you manage your dashboard view by these stars i've removed some to simplify his um, dash or their dashboard view and I did want to show you one thing down here, this future enrollments area. If you log into Canvas now and you know you've already registered for spring classes and they're not showing up, don't worry. Um, you can go to this courses tab and I'll show you that one more time. We're on the dashboard and pretend your dashboard is not showing any of your current classes. You click the courses button and view all courses down here and scroll all the way to this bottom area here where it says future enrollments. This is where you'll be able to see that, oh, I did register for Math 148 and I am registered for MCS 105. But if you look at the far right, they're not published yet. And so that means they're not available to students yet. The faculty is still working on the content. So 
confirm that you are enrolled, take a deep breath, and things will be great. And as soon as they are published, they should automatically land on your dashboard. Um, once in a while, they don't, um, and you can always just come back and star them. But you see, I can't star them yet because they're in the future. So moving on this list, you may or may not have groups. Um, that's course dependent. Um, sometimes um, some classes use groups and then you have sort of a mini canvas area and that groups are named so you'll be able to navigate to the different groups. Um, the calendar, this is a super helpful feature um, because we're still in that big picture view of canvas. This is going to pull in everything that you have in all your classes. So if you look at the far right, these are all the calendar items. And again, Sam has a lot of classes. You won't have this many, but um, when the boxes are checked, they're the, whatever color they are, and when they're unchecked, they're not showing on this calendar. So you can control what you're looking at in this view. But if we go to April, you can see that, oh, Sam has some work coming up. And the idea is all the assignments from all your classes land on this main global calendar. And so you can actually have a big picture view of, oh, I have a lot due on Tuesdays in um, this intro to Canvas class, and maybe your math class has things due on Wednesday, and it just kind of helps you organize your work and um, feel, may feel overwhelmed with the volume of work, but at least you can see the pacing and when things are due and plan ahead. Um, you can also do an agenda view if you prefer looking at a list of assignments like this, or also week by week. So that's the calendar, and there is a calendar inside each class itself, so if you don't want all of them at once, you can look at it in your individual class. Um, inbox, okay. So inbox is a messaging system within Canvas. Um, I just wanna point out it is not email. So if you lower your expectations, think of it more as a messaging opportunity as opposed to true email, you'll be a little less frustrated. It's pretty basic, um, you know, to start a new message, you do this, I don't know if you can really see that, there we go start a message, compose a new message button, you select the course you're in, and you know, you're probably only in a couple courses, so let me do intro to online learning, and then I want to write to someone. I can't remember people's names. I can click the directory in the far right. I can write to all my teachers, and here are their names, or I could choose, oh, I need to write to that student who we said we were going to work together. You can click the students tab, well, there's only Sam in this class. So let's pretend you want to write to your teacher instead. Um, oh, there you go. Teachers, and you want to write to, I'm Amy, you want to write to me. Great. Add a subject line, homework question. Um, and then, hi, Amy, I had a question, blah, 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 blah. And when you're ready, um, oh, and you can attach something. So maybe you needed to submit an assignment and for whatever reason you felt like it wasn't going through in the assignment in the class, you can attach something here, same idea. Your browser window opens in your, in your computer. You pick what you wanna upload, you choose it, it attaches to the message and you hit send. Um, so this message is sending. Um, two things to know. Um, within Canvas inbox, you can only message other students that are in your classes. So even if your best friend is taking classes at Shoreline, but you don't have any of the same classes, you can never use Canvas inbox to message each other. It's a closed messaging space within each class. The other thing to know that I think is really helpful is, I'm trying to find, um, like let's find that sent message. So Sam just sent a message to me. Here it is. Um, the nice thing about Inbox is it's going to keep a running tally of your communications. So let's see if this one works. Okay. So here Sam sent a message to Patricia and maybe someone else. And it's just going to make a scrolling list. So Sam sent a message in February. Patricia sent a message back and it's just going to continue the scrolling list so a real time or a real life application may be you know you get COVID-19 and you're very sick and you miss an assignment and so you send a message to your faculty and you say I am so so sick I'm doing my best to keep up but I might not make you know the deadline for Friday's homework is it possible for me to have an extension you would send that to your faculty they would write back I'm so sorry you're sick 
Of course, you can have an extension you have until, I don't know, next Friday and they include a date. You write back, thank you, you go back to bed, you sleep for four days, you wake up and you go, huh, I can't remember when they said I needed to turn that assignment in. You go to your Canvas inbox and you can find that string of messages between you and your faculty member and you'll see right there what date and time they said that was due. And it's also on their end. So if they can't remember because they're managing 110 students, they can go to their inbox and say, oh yeah, I told Sammy had till Friday. So it's just a really nice one place to keep your com communication between faculty and yourself. Um, you're not digging through emails from two weeks ago trying to find the one that related to that extension. Okay, there's probably more information than you wanted about the inbox. Oh, okay, one more thing. The other thing is every faculty member has their own opinion about how they want you to communicate with them. Some love the Canvas inbox and some really don't like it. So in that first week of your classes, make sure you really pay attention to how your faculty want you to communicate with them. Some only want you to use your go.shoreline.edu email. Some only want you to use the inbox. And so that's their discretion. So just make sure you pay attention to that and you know so that if you get sick, you don't have to then use a foggy brain to try and figure out um, the best way to contact them. Okay, so the very last thing I wanna show you on this green navigation bar is the help menu. Lots of resources here. Honestly, the one I really wanna share with you were the two are um, access for you to our Canvas 24 hour a day, seven day a week support. So you can live chat at any time with Canvas support here when you by clicking this chat button, or if you're more comfortable, you're welcome to call them. Here's the phone number for students. They are available literally 24 hours a day. They're in Utah. They're all employees of Canvas. It's not outsourced to another calling center or something and they really know what they're doing. And we just looked at data, oh gosh, two weeks ago, I think, and pretty much from 5 p.m. till 5 a.m., there's a spike in calls from our, and contacts from our campus. So it's 11 o'clock at night, our office is closed, and you can't remember how to attach an assignment, or something's just not working the way you remembered it should, just reach out. That's what they're there for. Um, your student fees help pay for that. So by all means, please don't be shy, please use it. Okay, so we're going to go back to our dashboard view and there's one other thing I want to talk about with you and then we're going to go ahead and enter a class. On the right hand side, um, there's a coming up list and sometimes there's a to do list and then a coming up list. Um, students love them, faculty, it makes them pull their hair out. Um, the bonus, of course, for a student is you say, oh gosh, look what I have coming up. I have a final paper due and um, I have something else due. And right here it tells you the due date and the time and helps you organize yourself. Faculty don't like it because um, like here, final paper two is open. Oh gosh, I gotta get working on my final paper. And then you click on that and that link will take you directly to that final paper assignment. But what it doesn't show you is all the information, the reading, the thoughtful discussions, everything that your faculty member has created for you to help you learn the content, practice the content before you have a big deliverable like a final paper. Um, so sometimes students jump right to that link, they click it, they try and do an assignment and they're scratching their head going, how am I supposed to know how to do this? They haven't taught me anything. Well, they did, but you missed it because you went straight to that to-do list and you went right in and did the assignment. So. I encourage you by all means use the to-do list, use the coming up list as um, a good reminder to yourself that stuff is coming up, but when you see that something is coming up in Multicultural Studies 105, you then say, oh, okay, I better go to that classroom. And so that is where these colorful tiles come in because each of these represents your class and these are basically that doorway into that classroom, into that content. So today we have a practice class that we've set up called Introduction to Canvas and Online Learning. And so we got to find out what's going on in class because maybe we have a to-do that's coming up. Um, and clearly we have an announcement we haven't read. That's what this little um, icon means. Oof, there's an announcement. So we need to take some action. So we're going to click on this name and that is going to open the door and take us into that classroom. Here we are, we've entered the classroom. As a quick glance, this is the home page. 
Um, home pages can look different in different classes. Faculty have some options. This home page here is just like a blank piece of canvas paper that I've put some writing on and an image. Um, often there'll be contact information for faculty, um, maybe a big start here button, but this is the home page. On the left hand side, you'll see there's some now internal class navigation options. We're going to go through some of these. And on the right hand side, oh, there's that to do list again. So now you're in the class and you've got quite a few things to do with due dates. But again, don't just jump in and do them. Think through how your teacher has set up your class and what you need to maybe do before you do this work. Um, and so to know, let's just start here on the left hand side. Let's go to the syllabus tab. And um, I should say these options, while the words will remain the same, faculty have a choice to hide or unhide some of these buttons. So there's a lot that I have hidden here because I don't think you need access to them in this class. Um, so there's a discussion button, an assignment button, quizzes, it goes on and on. I've hidden those because I really want you to work through modules, which I'll show you in a second. Um, but just know there might be in a different order, um, there might be new ones, some missing, it will vary by class. But the syllabus button may or may not be here. Um, this is a tool that's built into Canvas. Um, I've pasted my syllabus in here. Um, sometimes faculty will just put a link to a document, but you can read the whole syllabus, which of course I strongly encourage you to do frequently. Read about what the expectations are, the grading, the late policy is huge. Um, if you need support as a student with a disability or um, a veteran, all those sort of resources are here. But at the very bottom, Canvas does this cool thing that I appreciate um, where it pulls in all the due dates that are already entered in assignments in Canvas and it pulls them into a summary. So just another to-do list um, internal to the course. Um, it's really great to look at if, this, if your faculty uses this tool because it really shows you the flow of the class. Um, given that we're sort of in this an emergency situation and some teachers may or may not have ever taught online or in Canvas yet, um, we'll be doing a lot of training in the next few weeks before classes start, um, but they may only have a couple weeks of assignments up. They may be building content just a week or two ahead of where you are. So you may not see the whole um, year or the whole quarter here, but at least take a look, kind of get a sense of the rhythm of the class. But that's the syllabus tab. Sometimes faculty don't use it and they just have the can uh, syllabus in a module page. Again, I'll show you that in a second. We noticed that there was one announcement. So that means my teacher has posted an announcement and I ought to read it. So I can click on it, it takes me right to those announcements. Um, and also on my, and it's not always, but on this class I have that announcement on the top of my homepage. So as soon as you land in the class, you see, oh, there's a green dot, I haven't read that announcement yet click on that announcement and it's a welcome message, welcome to spring quarter, it's got some information for you. Keep an eye on that, keep reading, <clears throat> keep checking for those announcements um, because I, you know, it's going to be a flexible quarter. <laughs> we might have some things change, some due dates change as the situation changes um, in the, at the college and in the country, in the state. Um, so that's announcements. Uh, modules. So this is typically the core of every fully online class. Um, this is a way for faculty to organize the content they want to deliver to you. It is very linear and I know that doesn't always work great for some people, but it's what we have, so bear with me. Um, a module is basically, think of it like a giant file folder. Um, this is the file folder for the stuff we're going to do in week one. And then the faculty is able to add things to this file folder in the order they want you to do them um, and a variety of things. So we're just going to work our way through this module and I'm going to show you kind of how they work. So here's week one module. I'm going to click on the week one overview. This is just a page in Canvas that's welcoming me to the week. Um, you know, it introduces, it says what the topic will be. Um, this one has the weekly objectives, so you know right away, ooh, this week I'm going to need to learn how to calculate daily protein. I need to be able to describe protein digestion and metabolism, and I need to identify the two types of amino acids and define their characteristics. 
I should add, I'm a nutrition instructor, so this is just my area of comfort. But, you know, it could be math, it could be science, it could be art, it could be drama, you know, it could be whatever your subject is. Hopefully they've got a little plan for the week so that you know what's coming. Um, I like to include the to-dos for the week because, um, again, helps you to know what's coming, what due dates are. Um, I think the biggest piece of advice I can give you as, especially if you're new to online, is really check into Canvas every day. Be present, um, make sure you're on top of your work because even as an instructor, I see that laptop on my desk and I see a sunny day and I go, oh, I'll check in later. You know, I'll grade that later. It's really easy to get sidetracked. So set up a schedule for yourself. Um, make sure you're checking in daily. Make sure you're checking your go.shoreline.edu email account. That is the only way we're legally allowed to converse with you as the college and its faculty. Um, and so please use that email. Please check that email because so much good information goes in there and so many students miss it because they're not checking. So I encourage you to check that email and Canvas at least once a day, depending on how many classes you're taking, um, but please do. As you're navigating Canvas, um, we could go back to modules and find that next page, but Canvas is also built sort of that file folder idea or a book, you can actually just click the next button and get to the next page in that module or flip over that page in the folder and see what's next. So we read the overview, what's next? Oh, look, there's a video. I need to read it or watch it. Um, I was, my faculty added a due date. There's no deliverable here. They just really want to make sure that you've watched that video by April 10th. So please watch the video, listen carefully. Let me know if you have any questions. Okay, great, watch the video. This is a YouTube video, you can just play it right here in Canvas. Um, I'm not gonna do that. And again, I could flip back to that overview page because I forgot what the, maybe the objective was I was supposed to get from this, or I go next to the next page and it'll tell you what it is. So the next page is a week one discussion. Awesome, we're gonna click next. So this is a discussion. I would say almost all of you will have a few of these in your fully online class. At the top, you can tell it's graded. It tells you how many points possible, tells you the due date, tells you who posted it, um, the title. Um, over here on the far right, it shows you that there's already 37 posts to this discussion, and I haven't read 23 of them. So me as a student, if I'm being Sam. Um, this is a good reminder, you know, you're checking in daily. If you have a discussion, it's really important that you pop in every day and just try and catch up because you can get behind really fast. If there's 30 students and you're all required to make two posts, one or two posts, that's 30 to 60 posts. And that's really hard to catch up on. Um, and often, you know, there'll be an assignment. You'll be asked to do something, to post something. And then you're often asked to please comment on two of your classmates' posts. So suddenly you've got 30 classmates, you're replying to two, you know, you're ending up with 150, 250 posts. You don't want to come in there five minutes before it's due and try and catch up. So again, check in daily. If you're doing discussions, just read them. You know, I can read 23 posts pretty quickly. I can't read 180 posts pretty quickly. And I don't want to. So here's an area where the discussion assignment will be explained. Um, here's a couple, uh, questions that prompts maybe that the faculty wanted and it does say please review the discussion rubric before submitting i'll be honest i didn't know what a rubric was probably till two and a half to three years ago um, i think they're using them more now in k-12 education so you actually may know what they are but they didn't use them when i was in k-12 so anyways a rubric is just if you don't know is sort of a a table of what the faculty is hoping that you do in your assignment um, and how you're going to be graded. So it's really clear. This is how I'm going to grade you. So when you're writing content, when you're submitting assignments, if there's a rubric, by all means, take a look at it because you're going to improve your grade simply by making sure you know what is important to the faculty and what they're really asking. So um, in Canvas discussions, you as the student can go up, it says, the black year, they've changed it now to three dots, but you go up to the upper right 
and you click there and it just shows show rubric as a choice. So I'm gonna click show rubric because I don't know what they want me to do. And here it just is a breakdown of the criteria and how many points they're worth. So the whole thing is worth 10 points. Um, you know, I get some points for addressing everything that's asked. Oh, I get a point for making sure my spelling and grammar is correct. Um, avoid text abbreviations, avoid swear words, um, use periods and capitalization before you hit submit. Just read it over once, um, out loud even. Sometimes I hear errors that I don't know that I've made when I'm just reading it over with my eyes, but when I read it out loud, I'm like, oof, I can't believe I was gonna send that. So take that extra moment and proofread because often it's worth points. Um, here's the bulk of the points. This is a 10 point assignment. 30% or three points are about, did, I, did my post display an understanding of the readings and do they demonstrate knowledge? Does it show that I actually watched the video about proteins? Do I understand amino acids? Um, and then interestingly, 40% or four out of 10 points are based on comments to classmates. So in this class, as an example, it's a big deal that you read your classmates' posts and you post to them. So note that, because if you don't do that, you've just automatically got a 60% out of 100. So um, important to know what you're gonna be graded on. And then I'm just gonna show a little, I put this in all my rubrics and it's not worth any points, but um, it's just reminding you you're online. Um, written words can be taken differently than spoken words. And so just be really respectful of your language, sensitive to people's genders, cultural background, political and religious views. You can have a discussion and challenge each other's ideas, but in a respectful way. This is not the place um, to be hurtful. I mean, you're all in this together. So that is the rubric. And then finally, to reply to the discussion, you just click reply. And you just get this box in Canvas. It's like a blank piece of paper. You can start typing. Whoops, if I click in it, you can start typing. Um, you can link to articles. This is the link button. Um, you can uh, go to YouTube and include a video. You could record an audio or video post right here inside this. You can attach files all of this within this document. When you think it's good, proofread it one time and then click post reply. And voila, there's our very unintelligible post from Sam. It shows you the time you submitted and it always lands at the very bottom. And then let's say you were required to respond to your classmates. I'm gonna respond to Derek's post here. I read what he had to say, I click reply and you get the same kind of box and you say, hi, Derek. And it's really nice to use people's names. Hi, Derek. <clears throat> I agree with what you have written. Now, some people just do that. And then the teacher should said, you know, please respond to two classmates. I did. I said I agreed with Derek. Well, they want more than that. They don't want you just to agree with them because that doesn't advance the discussion. Um, you would never in a class when you're discussing something like a, a time in history and you are discussing and someone raises their hand and makes this comment that's you know insightful maybe and, and interesting and you raise your hand and you say hey Derek great post and then you're done like we don't do that right because that didn't help the discussion so instead for sure give the person props if you agreed with them or if you didn't agree with them you could say um, something like keeping, you know, being kind in mind and thoughtful, say, well written opinion, if it's an opinion, well written opinion, however, I found in the article, blah, 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 that some scholars or whatever, some scholars think differently. And then go on to explain what you read and why it's different and sort of the evidence that um, supports the other point of view. Again, it's friendly, it's kind, but you're adding to the discussion. It gives the opportunity for other classmates to hop in and maybe share what they read, you know, so then you get this give and take interaction. And that's what a great discussion should be like in an online class. All right, so phew, we finished the discussion. What else is in that module? So we can click next again to get to the next page, which turns out looks like it's a quiz. 
but maybe you've kind of, you spent so much time in the discussion and you're, ugh, I don't, I kind of got lost. I don't really know where I am. You can always go back to modules. Click on the modules button. Okay, here we are. Week one, I did the video. I've done the discussion post. Okay, I've got to do a quiz. Am I ready for a quiz? I hope so. All right, so I'm going to click on the quiz when I'm ready. It has a due date and a time. Make sure you note the time. Um, the quiz will shut you out um, at that time on April 14th at 11.59. Even if it's an hour-long quiz, if you start it at 11.50, at 11.59, you're getting dumped out. So if it's an hour-long quiz, make sure you start by 10.50 to give yourself that full hour. Tells you how many points it's worth, how many questions there are, and what the time limit is. So this one's a 15-minute quiz, but it's one question. Also, um, sometimes there's multiple attempts. So this quiz actually has three attempts. Um, that's often if faculty really are giving you a quiz to just make sure you've engaged with the material, you're kind of getting the basics, it's just really a self-check. Often there's more than one attempt. If it's the final exam, <clears throat> probably unlikely to be more than one attempt. Um, here's an area for instructions. <clears throat> it may say what the quiz is covering. Um, this one says it's open book, great, and that I have three attempts. My goal here is to make sure you've picked up on the important points from this chapter. Great. All right. Whew. I think I'm ready. When you're ready, you hit, hit take the quiz. The quiz opens. A timer starts in the upper right, so it's clicking down. So I knew I had 15 minutes and it's just clicking down the time. So I'm able to kind of keep straight on what that looks like. The instructions are still here. So if I couldn't remember if it said open book, it did. And I do have three attempts. Great. Here's one question. It's a sample question, has no real question, no real answer. I, this is a multiple choice one. I selected my answer. Um, we do have essay questions, true, false, matching, fill in the blank. There's all kinds of options. When you've done your quiz, you've checked your work. Um, it auto saves as you go. So should you have unstable internet, you can tell that this quiz did save at 11.15. So even if my internet, let's say there was 20 questions and my internet just flaked out, I know it saved my answers up until then and you should be able to re-enter the quiz and begin again. I'm feeling good. I feel like I've answered all the questions. I'm ready. I submit the quiz. And here's my confirmation screen. So it says, um, shows me my last attempt. I got one out of one, so I got 100%. I completed it in one minute. And apparently I got the answer right. <clears throat> but pretending I wanted to take it again because I had more attempts, <clears throat> excuse me, there is now the take the quiz again button. So I just click it again and I can give it another try. I'm going to say blue this time. I'm going to submit my quiz. <clears throat> Second attempt, my latest attempt. Oof, I got a zero out of one. I didn't do so well. So <clears throat> in any event, that is how quizzes work basically. Again, no idea where I am in my module. I'm tired from that quiz. I go back to the modules. Let's see. Oh, I did my quiz. Oh, look, I only have an assignment. And then I'm just going to show you actually how to review feedback in an assignment. So I have one more assignment to do. So let's do an okay for time. Let's click on demo assignment to submit. So you just click on that assignment button. Looks a lot like all the others. It has the due date, has the points. It tells you what you're submitting. So <clears throat> in this case, it's a text entry box or file upload, which is, I'm going to say, pretty common. Um, and I'll show you both of those in a second. Um, so here's some instructions from the teacher. Please consider the following prompts with a doc upload or text entry. Limit your response to 150 to 200 words. Um, here's the prompt question, and if you have any questions, please send me a message in the Canvas inbox. So the teacher specifically said how they wanted it submitted. So, hmm, all right, I got to think about this protein question. I got to come up with some resources. When I'm ready, I'm going to hit submit assignment. And submit assignment. Now down here is a box that pops up where I actually submit it. So I had a choice of a file upload or a text entry for this one. You may or may not see Google Docs, so that's optional, so I'm not going to talk about that one right now. But for file upload, <clears throat> that means you've created your content, your answer in a Word doc, <clears throat> and you're going to choose a file to upload it to the assignment. 
and I, here we go. Here's a Word doc that I have written already, and now I'm just submitting it to this assignment. So I chose my file. I went to my file explorer. I'm on a Mac in Windows. You're going to just uh, search here and find what you want and choose it. And it's going to upload here, and you're going to confirm that it did. And if you want to add another file, you can, and you just keep going, adding, adding, adding. So if there's multiple files, no problem. Um, you can make a comment. Hi, teacher. Or I'll put hi, Amy, I guess, since that's the teacher's name. Hi, Amy. I hope I did this right. <clears throat> or something. And you don't have to make a comment, but it's just handy if you're not sure you attached it right or you're worried about anything, you can write that note there. And it actually lands in um, your faculty's email box. And then you click Submit Assignment. And so I'm going to submit that. It's going to take a minute to submit because it's sending the documents. And then you get um, a submission confirmation screen. So here it shows you, yes, you did submit at 1119 on March 20th. It even shows you the document that you uploaded and any comments that you made. Um, but maybe you were supposed to also include a bibliography or there was some other thing you forgot. Oh shoot, I didn't answer the second question. Uh, you always have a resubmit assignment button. So you can just resubmit the assignment if it's before the due date. Um, and this time I'm gonna show you text entry. So instead of uploading a file, you can actually just compose your text right here in this Canvas page, just like those other blank Canvas pages we were talking about. I believe, and you can just start typing away right in here. But as though, although Canvas is very stable, I think this is a little bit of a risky choice, especially if it's, you know, 200 words that you're going to write and maybe edit and then come back to. And if you really want a nice polished submission for this, I would actually encourage you to write it in a Google Doc or a Word Doc first. Get it how you want it. Be happy with it. When you're happy with it, copy that text and then just paste it in here. Because should your internet flake out in the middle, you might lose all your work. Or maybe, you know, you need to come back to it because dinner is ready or you have a child crying or a dog needs to walk, whatever it is. It's a little risky to just compose it right in this text entry box. So I encourage you to write it elsewhere. When you're happy with it, paste it in here, submit assignment. And the last thing I want to say about assignments is, oh no, if you look on the right hand side, yeah, sure, it shows that I, I submitted a, a text box and I can click the details and it shows what I wrote, but where are my other assignments? And this freaks students out all the time. So I'm here to tell you the great news is that your faculty will see every single submission you make. So you could submit 10 times, they will have access to all 10 submissions. So don't panic, it didn't get written over, it didn't get deleted, it's just that you're only shown the most recent submission. I get that question a lot, so take a deep breath. It's good, everything is safe in there. So we're getting close to time, but I did want to just spend a moment to show you grades because, right, that's one of the most important things. So if you click on grades in your classroom, you're going to see this vertical list of all the assignments. And um, I think you'll see all the assignments for the entire quarter. Like this project two is due May 4th. It's not in module week one. Um, if you tried to click on it, it would just say you don't have access to this yet. But you'll see what's coming. Again, another way to see what's coming up. Um, I've got quite a few grades in here as Sam. There's, um, here's a score. This looks like I have some comments. And I'm going to show you what that looks like here in a minute. Here, this one, this new demo assignment, there's a letter T or if there's an icon, it simply means you have submitted something and your faculty hasn't graded it yet. So it means you've submitted. A dash, this means you have not submitted. So these are the ones you want to be careful of. You want to make sure you fill all those in and make sure you get that work in. But we're going to go down to this week one project. So we graded this in advance so you can see what that looks like on the student side. I got a 44 out of 50. Um, clearly I have some comments for my faculty. There was a rubric on the assignment as well. So I need to check in and, and there's a blue dot here too that tells me, oh boy, I have a new grade. And um, so I want you to go ahead, this is important here, click on the comments, 
here's this comment Sam made to the teacher. I hope I did this right. The faculty wrote back, hey Sam, great work on your first project. Please see the annotations I made on your submission by clicking view feedback in the assignment view. Please let me know if you have additional questions. What does that mean? Well, um, that means that you need to go back to this assignment and click on the name. And this little tiny blue view feedback is really critically important. Um, so if you click view feedback, it's going to bring up your submission. And then you're going to see where your faculty member has actually written comments specifically on your document and giving you feedback. So um, students miss this all the time because it's so hard to find. So I just want you to know that it's there. Um, and I'll show you how to do that one more time. If we go to grades, and we saw, here we are reading the comments. And the only way you'll know is if you read comments for your instructor. Um, please view the feedback. Oh, okay, so I do have to go up here and click on the assignment name and click on this view feedback button. Um, Canvas has, we've been complaining about this for years. Canvas is issuing a new version of this, I think by summer, but it's not going to be ready for spring. So just know you have to do that. Look for that view feedback. And the last thing I wanted to show you in grades are, um, there was also the rubric. So this is a big assignment. It was worth 50 points. There was a rubric for it. And here's my grading. I got 15 out of 15 on this part. Oops, I only got five out of 10 on clearly explains agree or disagree opinion. So there's a comment from my instructor. You are on the right track, but need to be clearer in your explanation. So I got sort of half. I didn't get zero and I didn't get 10, but I got five. So that's the only place. Oh, and I lost one point on relevant evidence from coursework. So it just helps you see how you were graded. Um, and if you consulted the rubric before you submitted, maybe you would have caught some of those and gotten some more points. All right. And then at the bottom, it shows you your total grade in percentage and then how many points you have earned, 74 out of 86 possible to date. So I've submitted 86 points worth of work and I've earned 74, which is an 86 percent. Um, and that Oh, and you can arrange your gradebook by different things and stuff, but that's sort of the biggest helpful thing about gradebook. And finally, there's often links to the library here um, and librarian chat. Librarian chat is a 24 hour a day service as well, where if you're working on a researching for a project and you need some help or you're writing a bibliography and you need some help, there are librarians from our consortium and I think it's West Coast, but I could be wrong, but all kinds of librarians up all night long um, answering your questions. So don't hesitate to ask them for support. And then there's a reminder to check your Shoreline email every day, please. Okay, so that is my quick, quick overview, not so quick, um, overview of Canvas. Um, I hope you're doing all right. I know these are kind of crazy um, uncertain times. And so just know that here at Shoreline, we're doing our very best to make sure that we're here to help and to make this as smooth as possible for spring quarter. And as we finish that winter quarter, I appreciate your time and um, I hope you're doing well and maybe you can get out and get some sunshine today and take some deep breaths. If you're taking exams this quarter, good luck with finals this coming week and um, we'll see you in spring. And by all means, reach out to Canvas 24-7 help if you need it. Also, email questions to elearning at shoreline.edu, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. All right. Take care, everyone, and I hope you stay well.